today i'm going to be sharing with you guys the five armies that i use for open field fighting in rise of kingdoms we're going to talk about the pairings the talent builds the equipment and my overall war strategy for my specific account what's going on guys cheers now on this channel we talk a lot about commanders right we talk about the direction of the game we talk about what commanders are good value what commanders maybe you should be saving for but i've never really shared the five armies that i specifically use and part of the reason for that is because i don't want people to invest in commanders just because i've invested in them if you look at some of the commanders that i have expertise it would today make no sense to expertise them you know if we look at richard for example you know back in the day richard was one of the first commanders I think he was the second commander that I expertise ever of legendaries and that's because back then he was very powerful very tanky even though he didn't deal much damage today however I really only use uh Richard to fill garrisons and to basically kill barbarians in the open field also investing in things like Zenobia and Cao Cao these things just don't make sense for a lot of players so regardless I do think some of you are interested in what I'm currently doing with my account because I've never really shared a video like this before so if this is something that you are interested in make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it does help me out a ton it helps get this video out into the algorithm so help me beat that YouTube algorithm and also many of you are not subscribed even though you think you are because YouTube's recommending the videos to you so go down there and click that sub button and if there's a lot of interest in this video then perhaps every couple of months I'll do an update to this to let you guys know where I am because I do have right now I have 1646 legendary sculptures and those are going to be going away very very soon so if you're interested and you want me to keep making videos like this the like button is the way to go so the first thing that I want to show off is actually my civilization because this sort of sets the groundwork for what my account is built around and that is infantry and prioritizing troop health one of the cool things about France is sure it doesn't give you five percent of stats like Rome but it gives you troop health and it's for all troop types so if I at this point uh, I have diversified a little bit away from infantry and I'm still gaining that three percent troop health so if you're fighting in the open fields and you have five armies that means you have 15 percent more health across those armies you know each army having an additional three percent the next thing I want to show off is my city skin because again this goes towards that foundation of where my starting point is for when I'm going into war and I have the Atlanta skin you guys know this if you've been following the channel for a few months you know that this is a zenith of power skin from 2021 this gives me 10 percent infantry health infantry health is very very good losing archer attack attack isn't too bad cavalry defense I would have preferred this maybe be cavalry attack as well but regardless you can see the starting point for my account is mostly focused on infantry and the last thing I want to show off is my VIP I'm VIP 16 I don't have the 5% extra damage from 17 I'm still about 300,000 VIP points away which is unfortunate but regardless that's where we're starting here with the account okay with all that out of the way let's jump into my five armies that i'm using for open field fighting in war so we're gonna go over the pairings talents and equipment for each of them the first pair that we're going to talk about is Guan Yu with Leonidas I'm just going to get this one out of the way because I think a lot of you guys expect me to talk about this and especially if you see my infantry foundation you know that obviously if we're open field fighting you have to talk about Guan now I did go for a 5155 configuration on Guan I invested in him a while ago and you can see here I did fail to get that configuration 5255 was the best that I could do so if you guys are shooting for that 5155 you're basically gonna I mean unless you're very lucky you'll probably have to use a lot of your skill resets to get that so hopefully you get more lucky than I did uh, at this point with CPO coming into the game and giving three shields for every CPO on the field it may actually be worth going back and expertise in Guan Yu so something to consider but every time he gets a shield you get 15 percent more skill damage and I think that if everyone's running around with CPO which they probably will be if he's as good as Lilith has shown him off to be then the probability that you will get a shield is pretty high so keep that in mind but regardless Guan Yu everybody knows huge AoE skill damage for an infantry commander he also silences all the targets that he hits for three seconds which is huge and on his fourth skill he does have a 50 percent chance to deal additional insane amounts of skill damage to the target you also get a nice 30 percent bump in attack and 15 percent March speed a little bit of healing there with a very specific condition but that's not something that we typically look too much into but realistically Guan Yu in the open field 
just dealing crazy aoe damage kind of glass cannon and leonidas as the secondary at 5511 i actually have him at 5512 because i had some extra sculptures laying around and they ended up in that last skill but uh 5511 leo is a very nice compliment to guan yu and is especially better of a a better compliment if your guan yu is expertise the reason for that is uh, because you do have a chance to gain your own shield without relying on nearby allies a nearby alex a nearby cpo for example um you do have the chance to gain a small shield and the thing about guan yu's expertise is you don't need a powerful shield to trigger this effect it could be a very weak shield it could be a one damage factor shield it doesn't matter as long as you have a shield you get 15 percent more skill damage so that's a little bit of utility that i'm currently missing out on but it's no nothing too crazy and the reason that we have leonidas secondary is because at 5511 he is extremely good value very low investment cost and he does gain give you some of the tankiness that Guan Yu is typically missing so you are gaining 30 percent increase in health for three seconds and you're gaining a nice big damage factor which is very very good especially because this damage factor is going to be dealing 50 percent more damage because it's guaranteed to hit during the silence window for Guan so you're getting a little bit of extra utility out of your Leonidas by putting him behind a Guan and the synergy here it's just really really nice okay you gain 30 percent increased defense and increase in your rage gain and again this is just some of the tankiness that guan is missing with a very low 5511 investment cost you also do get some nice utility on this last one uh you have a chance to gain increased damage for five seconds which is cool now on that note let's take a look at the equipment that i have here this is the best in slot equipment that i currently own uh obviously i don't have anything better than the blue shield and that's not that's like not, not horrible right i mean you're getting a lot of health here with that blue shield which guan desperately needs because he's only giving you that attack if we take a look at the pieces that i have replaced um the priority here for infantry should be the helmet and the chest piece because the epic equivalents here are only giving you attack so i replaced the witch's lineage which gives you eight percent attack uh with the um gold helm of the eternal empire this gives you some infantry defense which is very good looking at the hope cloak we get another um infantry defense piece again this complements the thing that guan is lacking he has his own attack buff he's getting the defense that he needs and health that he needs from the equipment now i did get lucky with my hope cloak getting talented if you guys missed the video where i actually crafted three legendary pieces of equipment it was during a live stream go back and check that out it's a very fun portion of my live stream that i've clipped into a video but this does also uh have the iconic attribute here so i get an extra four base defense points for my infantry which is very nice looking at the gloves here we do have more infantry defense which is very very useful looking at the legs more infantry defense we are piling on infantry defense here now i do prefer health by the way i do prefer health but realistically like you know i could use the correct humility here um it, it is what it is right it is what it is uh, i have it i just i don't use it i have multiple talented karak's humility on other builds um but for my legendary eternal light i just threw it on guan because why not looking at the at the boots boom more infantry defense right we would again we would have preferred health but at the end of the day you know what, what are we gonna do frost treads are very similar with the talent uh, but shio's return is half a percent better so i threw it on there we have the ring of doom this is pretty straightforward 50 percent chance for extra damage which is nice and we have the concealed dagger i like the concealed dagger a lot maybe i'm biased i don't know i think the more concealed daggers that your alliance has in the open field the better because they stack but this is going to reduce the target's health it stacks up to three times and the more the more that you reduce the target's health um the better trades you probably will have and again keyword is probably because it depends on a lot of factors but you're stacking the deck in your favor so this is pretty much the best equipment that i can have all of it is defense focused except for the shield which is health perhaps now that i'm looking at it there's an opportunity to add a little bit more health here on the legs but at the end of the day uh I'm, I'm compensating for guan being sort of a glass cannon by making him as tanky as i possibly can looking at the talent builds this is my current talent build this is focused primarily for canyon aka short fights where you want the most amount of skill damage and rage regeneration so if that's what you're interested in this is currently what i'm running here a couple of key points the reason that i didn't finish the entire tree for the uh infantry side is because in canyon you're missing out on all the talent points here all this stuff is useless this is all march speed this is all stuff you don't care about so instead of going all the way through that i just went up here to get clarity i also grabbed buckler shield i had one point left over 
it is what it is so this is for canyon open field fighting my build looks more like this where i did go to the top of the infantry tree but i only put two points in there instead of five because the other three points went into strong of body now if you guys didn't know um each point that you put into elite soldiers you get 1.5 percent of stats that is spread evenly across the three attributes um for me I would prefer two percent of health than 1.5 percent of stats spread evenly that's just my opinion um I feel like rejuvenate is non-negotiable uh tactical mastery and heraldic shield also non-negotiable so really the, I didn't have any choice but the reason that we care about these talent points for open field is because um you do get that March speed that you pretty desperately need on your infantry and Guan Yu in general I grabbed a piece of uh one percent health here in theory I could have put this over here for an extra half a percent but I would have you know gained attack and defense which I don't need as much so I'm valuing valuing one percent of health here over a spread of 1.5 percent it's up to you if you agree with that or not and uh buckler shield is nice We're just reducing that counterattack damage because there's just going to be so much happening in murder balls that you really sort of need that the second army I'm using in the open field is also infantry focused and that is Alexander primary with Herald secondary now this army I think is a little bit less destructive as the Guan Leo uh, there's just so much to love about Guan Leo but you can't ignore the nice um proc damage that comes out of Alexander and Herald in general it's very very good you look at the primary skill here on Alexander you get a shield which you really need this is a pretty fragile March to be completely honest with you guys you have some defense with um with Alex but you're losing some defense with Harold in general now obviously you have the chance to mitigate that but realistically it's pretty it's it's not the most tanky open field March and this is one of the reasons that I was considering getting Pakal and replacing Alex with Pakal and then using Alex with CPO but regardless um let's go through this really quick you get a shield for yourself a shield for other allies and enemies take 30 percent increased damage for four seconds that is a very supportive skill very useful second skill here has a 10 percent chance to deal single target damage factor that is equivalent to like Genghis Khan's active skill which is very good and it reduces the healing effect if that is relevant um here we see we have increase in 30 percent march speed and attack again march speed on infantry is very useful because they're very slow you can get caught in the open field and that fills your hospital very fast so again march speed is good on infantry this fourth skill gives you 30 percent defense when shielded 40 percent attack when not and the expertise is just a better version of that primary skill um Harold brings you more proc damage not only does he have a nice single target damage factor it's a little bit on the weaker side but it does get more powerful if you're swarmed which there's a chance you could be swarmed as an Alexander primary especially in season of conquest Alexander while he's very good is an older commander so some people may prioritize hitting your Alexander over other marches probably they'll hit Guan first maybe Alex second but regardless if you're swarmed you get that circular AoE which is very nice and your troops gain 20 percent increased damage for two seconds which is very cool um second skill doesn't matter, matter in the open field third skill is giving you more attack and March speed again very very good here and finally um fourth skill you have a 20 percent chance of popping your active skill again which is very very good so you have proc damage uh here you also have proc damage on the second scale in Alexander and there's just a ton of opportunities to just pop off and hit with that damage expertise on uh Harold one of the reasons that Pakal Harold is so hard to swarm is because that counterattack damage is just so good so again if you're swarmed it will hurt but you're gonna deal a lot of damage back which is very nice right now I'm not in KVK so my gear is actually over on my Constantine who I am trying to make a little bit more tanky but regardless this is the gear that I would be using on my Alexander if it were KVK except for the accessories and we'll talk about that in just a second but we see the same thing gold helm this is infantry defense we don't want more attack on our um on our Alex Herald it's just got enough attack already we see the same thing with the hope cloak I got lucky with two talents there um we see defense on the gloves we see defense on the boots we see health on the legs which is very very good same thing with the shield same shield we get the health I love the blue shield with the talent 10 percent health is just very very good looking at the accessories here we could see that these are not necessarily the accessories that I would use um one thing that I probably would do is I would look at my horn and I would say do we want extra rage on this combination we're already pumping out a lot of skills with uh, heralds just 
proccing constantly um we could put that horn of fury on there and that's probably something that i would do especially because alex primary has the attack tree and not the skill tree so maybe of a little bit of a lower skill cycle than you would necessarily want so the horn on alex would be something that i would consider i do have a talented infantry silent trial so that is probably the other thing that i would put on there but right now i'm doing herald primary alex secondary only because they're in canyon and i prefer the skill tree in canyon but for war in the open field this is the talent build that i use for alex now there's there's some opportunities here right obviously i did go all in on the six percent march speed here and again it's because infantry really need that and we grabbed literally everything in the infantry tree we just maxed that out part of the reason for that is because there's nothing that exciting in the attack tree obviously we love effortless so we had to get that I would like unyielding but at the end of the day there just wasn't enough points for it and realistically fight to the death is probably a good choice especially because we're just dealing so much uh skill damage with the procking of all the abilities however again I just didn't like do I want to take away from March speed do I want to take away from defense what do I want to take away to get that fight to the death um that's something that if you really want this you can go for it again it's probably better to have this but for me I just want that extra March speed on uh on this build so that's what I went for okay moving on to army number three we are moving away from infantry for the first time in this video and we have Nebu Isong now here's the thing with this combination obviously it is not infantry but the reason that I'm branching away from infantry is because guys at the end of the day you're going to be training archers and calves you just are over time you're going to be training them and yes you can use them to fill rallies and fill garrisons and that's fine but in the open field if you want to use them um you need a good pair to do that with and honestly uh Esong A with the circular AoE is invaluable and you really want as many people with Esong in the open field at the same time as possible it just it's so valuable to have that circular aoe and who better than to have nebu as that primary you have another insanely powerful five target a fan-shaped aoe which is buffed by the 50 percent extra skill damage on isong a's fourth skill his second skill gives you a nice bump in defense which you desperately need on isong a and march speed is nice and you can see i have a 5515 configuration for my nebu which is very good insanely good value and on the fourth skill here we deal 15 percent more damage just across the board and you have a 10 percent chance to reduce the target's rage by a hundred very very good stuff we love that obviously isong needs no introduction you have a little bit of a rage engine on that second skill where you're gaining extra rage 10 percent chance with a huge bump in your attack and the circular aoe on the expertise is obviously invaluable with that massive 1700 damage factor so this build is basically um as much aoe as i can pack into a single archer march that was the plan and i didn't even have to expertise nebu to get a very powerful archer march now if you missed my last video you should check it out i talk about the possibility of another circular aoe archer commander coming with the next archer set so Go ahead and check that out if you haven't it's more speculative than based on facts but it's something that you should at least be prepared for in case they do offer that power creep to archer players but this is probably the best way that i can find to use archers for my account especially without expertising another primary which is what i probably would have done if i went for something like ramses for example who is a very powerful primary for archers with isong a but he doesn't offer aoe and that's what i wanted with this build looking at equipment here i actually have the horn on nebu specifically for canyon right now um i do actually have an archer talented call of the loyal i didn't know what i just got lucky with a talent here and i was like uh like i have so many good accessories for infantry that i was like there's no point in putting an infantry talent here i figured cavalry is already fast let's go ahead and put march speed on my nebu so there it is that's what that's that um if i were actually using nebu in the open field would i use this maybe um but obviously this horn would not be here because i already talked about how this would probably be on my alex so if that were the case then i would probably have a, either a silent trial or i would have delane's amulet on here depending on how i wanted to build my other marches um and we'll talk about those other marches very soon other than that extremely standard epic build here for my set you can see here revival helm uh, this is a set okay so we actually do have the four piece set bonus meaning i'm getting six percent more stats here which actually is pretty good value is very good value actually for an epic set 
right which is very very good the chest place i somehow just have not gotten enough blueprints to talent this it's like actually insane it's an epic piece and i've been playing for so long and i still can't talent this like what is going on here i'm beside myself but regardless um i don't love this chest piece but it is a set so i pretty much have to have it and i will be talenting it as soon as i can gauntlets obviously you get archer attack nothing great there you do get archer defense on the legs and the boots i went with flame treads this gives you another seven and a half percent health which you do need for archers looking at golden age more defense here this is a very powerful um, weapon with the talent so pretty standard stuff here nothing like game breaking normally unless you are full archer account you probably won't have that many expertise or sorry uh golden legendary um items for archers you know unless that's mainly what you're looking for so yeah I didn't go too heavily on the investment side for the equipment here but if we take a look at the talent build you can see that I went all in virtually on the archer tree with a little bit of a, a couple of branches here okay so obviously we went over for razor sharp because this gives you more rage and you want a very fast sil uh, skill cycle for these commanders obviously tons of AOE you want to pop that off as much as you can um we went all the way up to rejuvenate we also have the extra skill damage here and we reduce skill damage taken here there's not any additional damage factor here um on this build so we don't need that at all and you can see I went up to whistling arrows because you have a 10 percent chance to increase all damage dealt by 25 percent for two seconds very good stuff there then a missing I obviously you want extra skill damage that makes a ton of sense um going over here I didn't want full quiver it's just attack and there's attack on the way I don't really care too much for that um we put two points in buckley shield because that's all that we had left to get here but it reduces the counter attack damage that you take and honestly where else was I going to put these points I would have only been able to put a single point in clarity if I made my way up there so there was no other place to put these points so that's where they are now the reason that I didn't go up to feral nature for the maximum skill cycle is just because I'm I don't know Feral nature I think is good for short fights realistically it's a 10 percent chance to pop off so you could average that over the co uh, course of a long fight but at the end of the day um you know I, I mean again is clarity worth it for this build and we are focusing on skill damage perhaps but again you're getting you're spending all these points just to get there and honestly I would rather just go up and just build it this way so that's kind of been my strategy if you're a big fan of the skill tree you could do something like this perhaps where you go all the way up to rejuvenate you go all the way up to clarity and you also put three points into naked rage this is going to deal the maximum amount of skill damage also grabbing venomous sting up top here getting the rage from razor sharp uh and you also still get the a little bit of tankiness here on buckler shield now if you don't like buckler shield you could make your way up to Phoenix tail arrows and that'll just deal a damage over time it's a 10 percent chance it's not crazy but perhaps you value that over buckler shield so you could do that as well uh, I had two points left over here so I just threw them in attack because there was literally no other choice other than maybe one percent of defense that's up to you if that's worth it uh there's really no way to get oh you could get half a point of health and one percent attack I guess if you wanted to that's something that you could look at as well but for me I just kept it simple all the way up to the top of the archer tree and that's it moving on to the fourth army that I use in the open field and that is my cavalry build so again this is not infantry focused despite the ground the foundation of my account being infantry and why again because I'm gonna be training cavalry units what am I gonna do with them well here is a value build just like my Nebu was this is a value build so we have a five 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 one Saladin with a five 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 one William now the combination here this is a tried and true old combination it's been around since William was put into the game Saladin at five 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 one has been around since Saladin came out which is like he's one of the first commanders they've added into the game um so very high single target damage factor here reducing healing you have a lot of uh, attack and defense March speed is nice and you see here 30 percent reduced skill damage taken and 20 percent reduced counter attack damage so um really good stuff there on Saladin he's got the support tree so he's tanky for a cavalry commander looking at William you have a weird rectangular AOE area but you actually are dealing nice skill damage to them but on top of that the fourth skill here uh scourge uh, scourge of the north when your active skill hits uh, a target you reduce their defense by 10 percent I only have one point in here otherwise it's 20 uh, but if you hit two or more targets you're reducing their defense and reducing their uh, their rage by 50 per second for three seconds so debuffing the enemy's rage very very powerful especially because you only have one skill point here 
get the maximum amount of rage um reduction for the enemy which is nice you get 20 percent attack and march speed by 15 percent, which is very very good you also deal 10 percent more damage in enemy territory or outside alliance territory so that's nice stuff there saladin does uh he has some attack but he's a little bit more tanky so extra attack on top of that is really nice and even more attack here on the third skill with a 10 percent chance to deal uh 800 damage and if they're surrounded you deal more damage as well so a very solid uh cavalry pair it's tanky it's cheap to build and if we take a look at my cavalry equipment then you're going to see that this is very cheap to build as well now obviously the equipment is on my william that's because i am in uh, I'm, I'm not in kbk right now so my william is a primary in my canyon i'm experimenting with this a little bit so that's not something that i typically would recommend but i'm doing william mehmed weird combination i know but i'm testing it out in canyon regardless this is the gear that i would have on my saladin okay so we went with the expedition warhelm this is blue this is a blue piece but you get eight percent cavalry defense which is really nice because if you take a look at the uh purple helmet which do i even still have the purple helmet for calves i actually think i dismantled my purple helmet for calves and the reason for that is because it's just attack right it's just attack so i got rid of it yeah, it's eight percent cavalry attack and that's if you don't have the talent otherwise if you have the expedition warhelm with the talent it's an equivalent amount of stats but it's defense which i just think is is better especially because you have a lot of attack you have some attack on saladin even more attack on william so for me i just went for the defense on the helmet because i feel like it's lacking we have the talented dark lord's blessing 10 and percent of defense i love that we have four percent attack four percent health here for cavalry it sets sufferance very good gloves here obviously a nice distribution we have cavalry health 10 and percent on the legs which is very nice and we have the windswept boots so we do get uh three and a half percent of uh of cavalry health and we get four percent march speed which is cool the alternative there is the cloud racers which you don't get the march speed and you get five and a half percent cavalry attack now of course if this is talented it's a little bit more but again we don't really need cavalry attack on this build so that's why i focused on the blue um windswept boots instead because again march speed health i think is a better choice we went with the heart of the saint with the talent gives you a tremendous amount of cavalry defense which is very good and as far as accessories go i'm just going to put the whatever i didn't use already so if my nebu has the flag and the silent trial then on my william it's going to have ancient stratagems and the Delane's amulet or what vice versa whatever I decide to pick and mix and match with those ones at this point you know a lot of people don't have that many accessories so you know just filling in where you can is what's important here and making sure that trying to fill every slot is is you know that's obviously you want something rather than nothing now if we take a look at my talent build for Saladin this is what we're going to find now this is sort of interesting right because I don't go to the top here rally and cry I think you know it's a lot it's 15 percent more damage it's only 10 10 seconds when entering the battle right so depending on the scenario in kvk this could be nice if you're constantly just you know quick fighting it would be good uh, but realistically if we're marching long periods of time getting into big fights uh, i think this talent build is better we went all the way up one point in cage of thorns just to reduce uh the march speed from the enemy just for a little bit rejuvenate is a must-have for the support tree obviously you get a lot of rage there also when you take skill damage there's a 50 percent chance that you'll get 15 percent additional skill damage reduction for three seconds love that buckler shield you can see here i love buckler shield i always grab this to reduce the counterattack damage that i take um undying fury gives you more rage so obviously you want that and i grabbed emblazon shield because reducing skill damage taken by 12 percent is very good for a a pair that's already sort of tanky right so that's really nice halberd uh, means you deal more damage to archer units putting two points in here does give you give you a significant amount of damage to archers obviously if you don't care for cage of thorns you could throw three points here and just really melt the archers in the open field the reason that i have this here is for you know if you have ethel floods in the open field for example ethel fled deals more da uh, damage to slow targets so having more slowed out in the open field is nice also if someone's trying to run away cavalry can sort of catch up slow them down and then everyone can storm them down obviously five percent isn't crazy but it's something now when it comes to my fifth March this depends entirely on the nature of the fight right I know that these four marches all of them have some form of AoE or high skill damage they have a little bit of tankiness built in and they all have full sets of gear right that's pretty much what we went with for this full, for the full four armies for the last army if we take a look at what options I have left I don't have great choices right I don't have great choices if we look here obviously Zenobia is not something that you're going to use in the open field 
um you could use minamoto with somebody like nevsky but i personally don't have nevsky at this point in time i could do something like a richard charles and have just an extremely tanky open field march but the problem with that is um no one's going to target it right people know that it's tanky and they're just not going to hit it so there's no point in doing that and it's not really going to deal any damage it's not really going to be that useful as a as a you know utility or support uh, obviously richard's primary uh you know does debuff the enemy which is good 30 percent less damage is nice but is it worth having a richard charles in the open field knowing that if it does get swarmed down it's gonna do horribly in terms of trades i've got mehmed at five five three five so he does have nice aoe i do have the relic for mehmed so he gets that extra health the extra skill damage there's good stuff there i have ethel fled right but ethel fled is very easily targeted so i'm not super in love with all the options that i have here i do have a five 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 one shook which i just got from the uh from this easter event which is cool but realistically nothing is jumping out at me as far as like this is a must have in the open field I do have Constantine at 5511, and I did for a while run a Constantine with a Joan of Arc as a fifth army. Now, the problem with this is that you are a huge punching bag. You're a huge punching bag, and you know, you again, you are delivering insane amounts of utility for your other armies and your allies in the open field. However, you know, as soon as the people see a Constantine, they assume that either a Jonah Mulan or an Ethelflaed are behind him and they know that they have to target it down. And they also know that they're going to get a really good trade if they do so. And so for that reason, I've sort of retired the Constantine Joan strategy. Um, it's just very expensive to keep filling the hospital in this way. And it's hard to measure how much of an impact you're having in the open field when you go ahead and use this March. So obviously on paper, you're doing a ton of buffing. Uh, you love the active skills on both these guys. So there's a lot to love here, but at the end of the day, it's hard to say that yes, me filling my hospital with this Joan arc, uh, with this Joan Constantine, um, is worth it because of how much utility that you brought to the field. Right? So I could do this, right? If we were dominating the open field and I wanted five armies, this is probably what the fifth one would be. However, I realistically keep my fifth slot open. And here's why one, I want to be able to send out a, an army to grab a rune. So I have two presets here for my marches. Um, I have Belisarius and Khan. Obviously I could use South Tower or something like that as well. It's not a big deal, um, but I have these presets for my fastest tier one units. Okay. Normally I would have a single tier one cavalry um, on, on this build and I would go grab a rune and runes are important in war, right? You can't deny that you need to get as many war stats as possible. And having one free slot to do that is important. You can also then kill that March and it runs back to your city faster and it opens up that slot, or you could just leave it next to the rune to keep refreshing it. If you're going to be fighting for hours and hours and hours. Also, I am one of the people who likes to fill garrisons or rallies, right? If I can, I will fill a garrison or a rally. And that's why, um, for my fifth slot, I do have Zenobia with my YSS. I could be a garrison lead if I decided to actually spend the money to max my tech. Lately, I have not been interested in spending money on crystal tech. I just think it's a very horrible system for the game and I don't want to support it by spending a lot of money on it. And it does cost a lot of money to max out your tech. And that's really what you would need for an effective garrison. So for that reason, I don't really use the Novia YSS at all. I'll throw it in a, you know, as a sort of backup garrison, if my Alliance needs it, which rarely we do, because we have a lot of garrison uh, players in our, in our kingdom. Um, but that's one thing to note. And it's also good for my own city. I suppose if I end up getting rallied again, hopefully I don't. But with that being said, I do have a few presets here that I use to just straight up fill garrisons. Now this, you know, obviously having a, a Richard Martel, um, having this very tanky in the open field with the healing means that the probability that I have as many troops get into that flag as possible as I want is good, right? That's, that's very good. Um, uh, I also have a Mehmed Caesar here strictly because of the troop capacity. Like I could literally just put as many troops as possible into a flag. And on top of that, I'll have my 50% expansion. So this is a way for me to absolutely stuff a flag or a fort with my units which is very very good now it depends on how many players are online if there's a ton of uh, like alliance members online then realistically you want to fill armies with like 100 or 150k just because like it's harder to get in with a huge size like this it's just very difficult but if a lot of people are offline and i'm one of the few people responsible for filling a flag then this is easy i just throw in a just ridiculous amount of troops with these armies and that's going to be the way that i do it that is not a great strategy uh if you want to be conservative with your troops okay so keep that in mind this is not for those of you who are conservative with your troops if you're free to play you only have so many troops to do stuff with 
you don't want to be constantly filling those flags and then you're you're out of the war like that's it right so that's sort of what i'm doing with my fifth army slot now obviously cpo is coming into the game you can see i've made a lot of progress on my chook I also have a ton of extra universal legendary commander sculptures, which I could then invest in somebody like Nevsky. I can invest in Pakal here. So that way I could do like a Pakal Herald, for example, and that will free up a, a slot for CPO. Um, honestly, it's going to depend on what we think is going to happen with the next Archer set. If we see a circular AOE Archer commander, which we might, that's just my guess, right? There's that's based on nothing. Um, if that is the case because of power creep, then I think I would probably do CPO Archer, then probably Nevsky and then Pakal. Um, that would be the order with which I go personally, but just to give you guys an idea of what my account currently looks like, there it is. I guess as a side note, I'll just point out that I always use the 10% defense for 24 hours. And I always use a 50% troop capacity. If it's a huge war, or if it's a small war, or I'm just going to be on for a little bit, I'll use a 25% and just like fill garrisons with that or something like that. All right, guys, that was a much longer video than I thought. So if you enjoyed it, if you found it informative with the talent builds and my thought process on everything, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. It gets this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other rise of kingdoms players might see it. If you're new here or you're unsure, if you're subscribed, go down there and check. You probably aren't go ahead and sub to the channel. It helps out the channel a ton and comment down below what you think is the biggest opportunity for my account. Do you think I should have a third infantry March? Do you think that I should invest in Nevsky? For example, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Many of you guys are extremely good warriors in rise of kingdoms that I could probably learn something from as well. I don't ever claim to be the uh, beacon of knowledge that everyone should look to. So I'd like to learn from you guys uh, when I get that chance. Uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.